Boom shakalaka, what's up guys? Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's video, I am actually joined by three awesome Italian crypto YouTubers known as Hard Rock Crypto, where we are going to be chatting about some insane crypto bull run secrets that you definitely don't want to miss. So stay tuned for that interview. Also guys, before you do, make sure to check out their channel. I'll post a link down in the comments and the description and subscribe to their channel for some more awesome content from them, especially if you speak Italian. If you don't, it might be a little bit difficult to understand, but check out this interview. We had a lot of fun. Peace. Hey buddies, welcome back to Hard Rock Crypto. Here with us, the majestic crypto love. Yeah. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. What's up guys? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, awesome. Really excited to have you here. Thank you to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm very excited. And, uh, you know, I've been practicing my Italian. So all of you will just do the rest of the interview in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Bellissimo. <laughs> Magnifique. Perfect. Perfecto. <laughs> Have you ever been in Italy, Cryptolove? Yeah, so I went to Italy. It's been a few years now, but I went to Rome, Florence, and Pisa. And I had the best hot chocolate I've ever had in Rome. Uh, some cafe somewhere near one of the bridges. I slept in the airport in Pisa. And then, uh, let's see, Florence. Florence was just really pretty. Great place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I got to come back because uh, I definitely want to go see Naples because I love pizza. Mm, me too. <laughs> we love too. <laughs> yeah. So introduce yourself uh, to our community. Maybe someone don't know you, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got into crypto in 2017, in the beginning of 2017, when another YouTuber who I trusted, uh, his name is... Sasha Day Game. He did a whole bunch of videos on pickup with girls. And he told me that if you own one Bitcoin, you'll be set for life. And uh, at that time, I was like, I had a lot of student loan debt. And I was like, whew, one Bitcoin, because it was right around a little under $2,000 at that time. And I was like, whew, $2,000 and I'll be set for life. I'll do that. So <laughs> I, got, I got into it. And like, it was early in 2017 when like the bull run really started in 2017 and so there was a lot of hype and i was watching all these videos and i watched a video by crypto daily and i was like man this guy's hilarious i'm gonna do that so i just started making videos and i was like i'll do one video a day and i just started doing one video a day and i think uh because of the timing and everything else it just kind of worked out my channel grew and then uh i've been doing it ever since yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just consistency. I mean, you guys got, uh, I think that there's a lot of people in Italy who uh, want to know about crypto, but they prefer to hear it from people speaking Italian. So I think it's a great market for you guys. Yeah, we hope so. It's a, our community is growing, so it's a good time now also for us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. It's the best time. Yeah. Do you have uh, any suggestion to give to beginners, to new people coming to crypto? Yeah. Uh, so the, I think my suggestion for beginners is like the hardest thing for beginners to do, because here's the thing, like crypto and Bitcoin, it's like the next shiny thing. And so everybody gets in and like FOMO is big, like the fear of missing out. You want to get into the next project. You want to buy the next thing. And you see this thing that, go, that went up like 100 percent in a day and Every YouTuber is talking about how this is going to be the next, this is going to replace Ethereum. It's going to be this. And like, so naturally you're like, oh, I need to get that. Blah. So you just go and buy it. And then the price drops. And then you're like, oh. And then the next day there's another shiny thing. It's like, oh, I got to get this. And so you buy it from, from your losses from the last one. You buy this one at the all-time high, and then you just go all-time high to all-time high to all-time high. And so I think that's my biggest warning to new people in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is uh, have patience. And it's like the hardest thing because this is something that I had to learn myself through experience. Because when I first got into crypto, I went shiny object to shiny object to shiny object. And 
that's the only that's that's the best way to lose all your money. Uh, <laughs> in order to make money, you need to either own it before the price goes up, or just you know basically trade it very quickly while the price is going up. That's the only way. So having some patience because for a lot of people getting in, they oftentimes they will get in because they want to get rich and they want to get rich quick. And while that's possible, it's not as likely as getting rich slow. Like you own some Bitcoin, you're going to get rich slow, guaranteed. But you go chasing altcoin gains and you buy at the top and you buy at the top and you buy at the top and then sell at the bottom. That's, you know, a way to lose money. So my, I guess my suggestion for people getting in is have a little bit of patience. Just, uh, you know, trading all the time isn't generally going to be a great strategy for you when you're new. You want to do more about finding out more information, learning as much as you can about the space because while we're in a bull run right now that's probably going to end either towards the middle or the end of this year there will be another one in like four years there will be another one and then after that another four years there will be another one and then another four years there will be another one so if even if you miss out on everything in this one there will still be another one and another one and another one and each time it's likely that the crypto ecosystem will go up a whole other order of magnitude in terms of value so have patience. That's my recommendation to, <laughs> to people Mine getting works. in. Yeah. yeah, right? It took me a while to learn, so. You know. yeah. Us too. <laughs> because people, you know, don't have patience also, like you say in your videos, uh, realistically serious. <laughs> like uh, you buy sometimes some coin, like $300 of data, make you a millionaire and stuff like that, or just for fun yeah so the, okay so here's a here's another this is like an insider secret for everyone watching youtube uh there is a for a youtuber somebody creating content on youtube we have a different objective than you guys so our objective as youtubers is to make videos that a lot of people will watch Whereas your objective as an investor or trader is to make money. So notice how they're not the same thing. And so unfortunately, many times we have to make videos about whatever coin is mooning, which also should be noted is the most likely coin to drop in price. It's called reversion to the mean. So anything that goes up comes down. So the times when we're making videos are the worst time to buy those coins <laughs> and so like a lot of times like my videos where i'll do these speculative like will you know 700 dollars of cardano make you a millionaire yeah it's certainly possible probably not in this cycle maybe in one of the next ones yeah it's certainly possible but oftentimes my making of those videos coincide with when the coins are mooning because that's when people will watch the videos and so I'm not going to, I, I also do videos where I talk about projects that nobody else is talking about because that's the time to buy them. Like when, when the fundamentals and when the, the technical analysis are looking really good for a coin and nobody's talking about it, I do that and I tell you guys about those because those are the great times to buy. But those are times when nobody wants to buy because they're like, the coin's not doing anything. Why would I want to buy that right now? <laughs> 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 yeah, everybody wants the coin when there is a hype like Cardano a few weeks ago and yep. buying at the top. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's it's like the it's the next shiny thing. Like you it's I think it's part of it's part of our evolution as human beings. Like we want to belong to the community. And not only do we want to belong to the community, but we kind of want to be like the alpha in the community. So we want to own whatever's cool at that moment. And in crypto, we can do that. But it only lasts for a couple days like you know so you can buy it but you're only going to be the coolest for a couple days and the price is going to come down something else i mean there's over eight thousand cryptocurrencies out there and so there's 300 days in a year so that means that any given day there's probably like 50 or more mooning coins so it's you have to figure out whether you want to just be cool and own the cool coin that day or if you want to make a lot of money now let's play if you want 
your <laughs> your Bitcoin price prediction for the end of this year? <laughs> for the end of this year. Oh, okay. So I think actually, I think the end of this year, it'll probably be somewhere between forty and seventy thousand dollars. This is just my feeling, is that we're we're somewhere between the middle and all the way at the top of this bull run. Now, based on trading shots 51-49% ratio, the the predicted top, the time of that would be about September, October. And however, I think we're kind of already too far up that where we may see the top even before then. And historically, Bitcoin has price peaks around May and June and around October and November. So if, if the top is going to be September, then the next peak would be May, June. So we could see a peak really quickly, potentially, because we're seeing like all this NFT craze. People are getting really involved. People are starting to talk about it. And if we see the peak and it, and it has like a blow off top and goes up to $275,000, it's likely going to come down now, probably not down as far as people think, like because right now a lot of institutions and companies are buying it on their books. And so they're probably not going to be selling it. So they're stronger hodlers than we've had before. So that being said, I think that likely the end of it. Um, so that's one possibility that we have that we have a peak and then it comes back down because I think I, th I honestly think that the bottom of like we're going to peak out and then the bottom where it comes down to will probably be somewhere between like 30 and seventy thousand dollars so that's pretty cool that we're kind of like yeah. right now where we are is going to be the bottom the top uh, people predict like I think you know we're gonna find very significant resistance at a hundred thousand dollars because there's always the big evens and then but you know, could go anywhere up to 200, 300, 400, 500,000. Who knows? It all depends upon how much retail FOMO there is. Because there is supply shock. Like we know that MicroStrategies is buying a ton, Tesla's buying it, all these other companies are buying it over the counter, and we don't hear about that. What they're doing is they're just decreasing the supply of Bitcoin. So as soon as there's retail FOMO and we start buying it heavily, because we hear about all these companies buying it. Like for all we know right now, Amazon could have bought a whole bunch of Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, we already know Tesla bought it. We could have Netflix buying a whole bunch of Bitcoin. We could have all these other companies putting all their cash reserves in Bitcoin. But because they're doing it over the counter, we don't hear about it. We have no idea. But when that news comes out that like Apple has put half of their cash reserves into Bitcoin, when that news comes out, retail FOMO is going to hit really hard. We're going to go buy it on exchanges, and that's which sends the price parabolic. So uh, I think that, you know, towards the end of the year, if we're not still in the bull run at the end of the year, it'll be somewhere forty to $70,000, but I think probably blow off top somewhere around like two to $300,000. And that's my prediction. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We love this prediction. <laughs> oh, yeah, who wouldn't? <laughs> it sounds great. Which uh, are your three favorite altcoins for this uh, bull run? Mm -hmm. All right. So I would say my the altcoin that I'm most bullish about right now mm -hmm. is Litecoin. And this is a weird one. I've never really been bullish about Litecoin before. But... Um, <laughs> Willie Wu, he's one of like my favorite uh, analysts out there. And so he has this thing where he talks about there's a few different types of altcoins, but basically it comes down to oscillators and degenerators. And so while most altcoins kind of go down in Bitcoin comparative, there are a few that just go back and forth. And he mentions a few different ones that are the oscillators. So he talks about uh, there's Stellar Lumens, there's Dogecoin, there's Litecoin, there's Decred, and there's one more that I'm not thinking of right now. But I was Dogecoin pumped massively, and I was calling that for like a month or two before it happened 
because I saw that it was down at like its lowest levels it's ever been in Bitcoin comparative. And I was like, this thing's got to pump. It's just, it's an oscillator. It has to. So Dogecoin pumped massively. And so of the rest of them, Litecoin right now is way down, like the lowest it's ever been. And if you take a look at the volume, there's massive buy volume going on for Litecoin. Plus it's selling at an 18x premium on Grayscale. So like Litecoin has a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on for it. So I think that, and, and it's possible in terms of Bitcoin comparative that it could go up 10x. So like there's a lot of room for Litecoin to grow. So that's my one that I'm most bullish on right now. Uh, I also think that, I think, uh, let's see. Other than that, I think that transferring things into the DeFi space is going to be important. So other ones that I have been investing in somewhat are things like synthetics and Ren, which are ways to put Bitcoin into DeFi, because I think that's going to be something happening in the future. Uh, I was very bullish on Matic, and that one just exploded recently. I think it still has room to go up because it's going to help with build out the Ethereum platform. But I'm not sure if we're at like kind of a local top right now because it's already gone up like 50 times. So uh, let's see. So I would say if I had to say three. Oh, and there's also another one. Another one that I really like. And this one is kind of out there. I don't own any of it, but I think it's a I think it's a brilliant idea. Is uh, and, and here's the reason for it. They've done study after study that no traders can do better than just putting money in an index fund, which returns on average 12% year after year in traditional stocks. So like it'll track the S&P 500, it gets you 12% on average per year. And no traders can consistently beat that. So I just saw this thing the other day called DeFi Pulse Index. Mm -hmm. And basically it tracks like the top 10 or 12 DeFi projects. And I think you can only get on Uniswap and somewhere else, but uh, that seems like a good idea because if you're betting on the DeFi ecosystem, why try and pick which one is going to be the winner? Why not just hold the top 10 or whatever in one project and then you'll do good. So I think that one will do well. A lot of people want to know what coin should I buy right now? And they want to know what coin is going to go up tomorrow. I don't think anybody knows that. Like, I don't think there's any way to know that unless you're part of a pump group or you're a YouTuber who has a channel of like 500,000 people because you can say this is going to go up tomorrow and enough people will buy it where it'll actually send the price up. So, you know, but other than that, I don't think it's possible to actually know what coin can go up tomorrow or in the next week. So like when buying coins, there's, in, in my opinion, there's two strategies. And so like with Litecoin, this is one of these strategies is you buy something low and you're going to have to hold it for weeks to months until it goes up. Like with Matic, I bought it months ago, knowing that the technicals look good. The Bitcoin comparative was way down. It's probably going to do very well. And I just hold it for months. And then when the price goes up, that's when I sell it. Um, so like the same thing with Litecoin. I bought it now because the technicals look great but I realize I'm probably gonna have to hold it for weeks to months. I don't know how long, I'm just waiting for it to pop and then I sell. So that's one trading strategy. The other trading strategy is to find out whatever's mooning today, buy it, put a trailing stop loss on it and sell it within 24 hours because if it goes up anymore, it's definitely gonna come down after that. So I think, uh, I'm glad you asked about Litecoin because I did wanna share it. Like I bought Litecoin knowing that it's probably not going to moon anytime soon. Like it's not going to be days. It's not going to be weeks, but sometime it's going to, and then I'm going to sell it for Bitcoin and I'm going to 10 X my Bitcoin. So, uh, that's the strategy behind it as opposed to just like, what's the next moon coin? Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why I'm holding my Ethereum bag. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I'm pretty much sure after we, me too. EIP 15 and everything else will moon sooner yeah. or later. It's about time. Yeah, exactly. Ethereum is bound to explode. It's just a matter of when. I think people are just waiting to see what's going to happen with ETH 
ETH 2.0, but you know, it's got the most developers on it. It's they have like a huge transition that they're doing right now, but it's you know, every DeFi project is built on Ethereum. Like every, I mean, people are people are optimistic about Binance Smart Chain and about all this other stuff, but let's be realistic. DeFi is built on Ethereum. Like I know it's expensive right now for transactions and it may be slow, but let's be realistic. DeFi is built on Ethereum. So until, and I think a lot of these other platforms like Binance Smart Chain and Cardano are not actually Ethereum competitors. They're just going to say, help save Ethereum. They're just going to make it easier to do transactions on Ethereum. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Now, I want to ask you, what do you think about uh, crypto social network like Hive? I don't know. You know Hive? Uh, Hive, yeah. And what what was that called before? Was that Steemit before? Yes, was Steemit okay. before. Now, Steemit is still alive, but they fall. But it's owned, yeah, but it's owned by Justin's son, so nobody yes. wants to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, think, I think that's a really interesting thing uh i've i've used steam it for you know like back from 2017 and i think it's really interesting because it it brings together money and the scarcest human resource out there right now which is attention and you can actually reward people in money for your attention which is really cool um, because, you know, like nowadays, all these companies are just vying for our attention. I mean, we have Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and everything. And, and people just, they just want your attention because they realize if they have your attention, they can sell stuff to you and make money. And so with crypto social networks like Hive, it's really cool because you can actually reward people with your intent, with your attention. You, you watch stuff, you like it, you can tip, you can do whatever. And... I think that's the way that eventually things will go because like your attention basically is almost equal to your life force energy. Like in life, you get to choose what you can pay attention to. And so why not reward people for like, you look right now at the highest paid professions. We have like professional athletes, we have musicians, we have movie stars. They're the highest paid professions because they command so many people, so many people's attention. And if you look at just like, I mean, YouTube, like the stuff that we do on YouTube, you couldn't do this 20 years ago without a big production company. But nowadays, all you need is a computer and you can do it. And so the attention that's going to movie stars now and going to professional athletes and going to uh, musicians eventually we'll be able to go to just anybody, anybody who's willing to create and they'll be able to be rewarded for it. And I think platforms like Hive is one of the early ways to do it. One of the biggest trends of this 2021 uh, is NFTs. What, uh, what do you think about it? All right. So <clears throat> I think NFTs are like the ICOs of 2021. So <laughs> they're like, they're a huge, they're a huge craze. And uh, I mean, like I just read yesterday that some dude got a, a legendary NF top shot NFT. He bought it for a hundred thousand. Somebody offered him a million and he turned it down. But I mean, he should, he should call them back and take it because <laughs> like, I don't know. So like NFTs are new, but someone who I really trust in the space is Charlie Lee. Uh, the creator of Litecoin and you know people will say whatever but he at the top of the market last year he did sell all his Litecoin but he also told everybody like don't buy Litecoin unless you can accept a 93% loss and he basically called the top and he also called the bottom and I think a lot of what he does is for the good of the community and so he's talked a lot about NFTs and he, I mean, he basically compares them to ICOs of 2017. They're the next shiny thing. People think that they're going to be able to collect a whole bunch of NFTs and then sell them. But uh, I, I, I'll be, I'll be honest in saying I, I, that I don't even understand this space enough. Like, 
I'm not one who col- I, I don't col- I'm, this isn't my real room. I don't collect stuff. <laughs> this, this, this is this is a picture. It's a green screen. And so like I don't I'm not I'm not a collector. So like maybe for collectors NFTs are the, are awesome. Uh but I don't I don't see the value in like an electronic collectible that you can uh that you can hold like a baseball card yeah you're the only person with that baseball card that's cool you can hold that you can put it in a little glass case whatever wonderful but like an electronic nft yeah sure that you're you're the only person with the rights to that who's gonna uh, this is this is my opinion who's gonna want it yes. you know so like because people have a hard enough time understanding bitcoin they're like can i touch it where is it you know and so like NFTs are basically like Bitcoin, but like less valuable because there's an infinite number of them. Bitcoin has value because of its scarcity. We can't, it's, it's not tangible. We can't, it's not physical. We can't touch it, but it's super scarce and it has a huge network effect. Like lots of people know about it and lots of people believe in its value. NFTs they don't really exist. I mean, there's a lot of digital, I mean, you can own a little picture or something like that, but I mean, here's the thing. You could have like an NFT of the Mona Lisa, but I could just go look up a picture of it for free. And it's the same exact thing. So I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the scarcity. I don't see the value in them, but I'll admit that I haven't done much research on NFTs because I did, I'm not really concerned with them. Like, I think maybe they'll bring people into this space, but I'm not, I don't I don't see the value in NFTs. I understand your point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We heard about uh, Chili's and uh, the hype recently. Uh, so Chili's was one that uh, is that yeah. one blowing up because of the NFTs? Yeah, NFTs uh, they doing um, fan tokens, uh, sports team, and yeah. you know it's it's like difficult because. I don't know what it's like to be new in cryptocurrency right now. Like, I think that's that's one of my biggest, the, the biggest blind spot for me and the biggest difficulty is that I see cryptocurrency right now and I see these new shiny things. Like I see DeFi and I see NFTs and I don't really see the draw in them because I see like, you know what, as a, as a whole ecosystem, it's going up. And then it's going to come back down, and then it's going to go up, and then it's going to come back down. It, it all comes back to Willy Woo's thing, where he takes a look at the top 2,412 cryptocurrencies and compares them to Bitcoin. And 2,407 of them lose value compared with Bitcoin. And there's five of them that bounce back and forth. And so, like... For me to to believe in anything other than just Bitcoin, I, th- I think that the older I get, or the longer I've been in cryptocurrency, the more I be I tend towards like the Bitcoin maximalism. Not that like Bitcoin exists and all coins don't exist, but like you really have to prove to me that you can do better than Bitcoin. Because, and it, I mean NFT craze, my opinion is going to blow up like it's doing right now. Like Top Shot is huge right now. But it's going to pass and then it's going to crash super duper hard. Like NFTs are going to be essentially worthless. And uh, it's going to happen. Maybe. Who knows? I can't predict the future. It's a difficult <laughs> question. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Too difficult. <laughs> what do you see in like what's the what's the craze in italy right now when it comes to bitcoin cryptocurrencies nfts like what's everybody what are your uh viewers really demanding to see from you guys they're asking you for uh, like you say nfts now is one of the trends so chilits now is the coin of the moment so many questions about it fan talk and this type of things or other type of nfts that have as to boom, as to moon, uh, like you mm-hmm. said, and our, the spirit now is NFT for us, and uh, mm-hmm. also the usual coins. Uh, Polkadot is very trending now. So they want to know like which platform that hosts NFTs is going to do well. 
Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, in general, they don't understand the value of NFT, like uh, cards, etc. Somebody put <laughs> them, and, them and me both. You're <laughs> 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 in good company. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, <laughs> like I, I made a video about a uh, uh, video game uh, on Binance and uh, people tell me, but it's a stupid game. Why should I buy pokemon or <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't understand the value why a pokemon <laughs> yeah i see i mean i'm the same way like listen bitcoin here's the thing it's the next shiny thing like bitcoin has a 10-year track record of being the top performing asset ever period like that's it the top performing asset of the past 10 years on average it gets 200 per year returns like out of out of the top 2,500 altcoins, only five of them don't bit don't beat Bitcoin, but they go back and forth next to Bitcoin. So, like, for me, there literally is scientifically, mathematically, no better investment than just putting your money in Bitcoin and eventually trade and and also trading altcoins along the way. So. Yeah, so I'm. I mean, I'm having a difficulty with it too. So I, I, I feel your uh, viewers. I'm, I'm, this, this, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, because Bitcoin is uh, too slow. You have to wait like two years. Only one time in two years, uh, you make an investment in Bitcoin. After two years, we are sure in profit. Yeah, it's too slow. But guess what? I mean, the average, the average age for someone watching at least my channel, and it's probably the same for your channel it's like 25 year old to 35 year old mostly male so guess what if you're 25 to 35 years old and male or female or even if you're older or younger than that okay but here's the thing so 200 percent per year that means that if you just buy it and hold it for 10 years you're going to be doing really really good that's 2000 percent Right? Yeah. 2000. That's 20 times whatever you have right now. Like, good luck finding that with a bank. Good luck finding that with any other investment. Like, take whatever you have now, multiply it by 20, and boom. And that's like, you know, I think it's going to go up way more than that because as of right now, every halving, the price of Bitcoin goes up a whole nother order of magnitude. So, like, last time it was in the 10,000s, the time before that it was in the thousands, the time before that in the hundreds. This time it looks like it's going to be in the hundred thousands. That means next half in 2025, we're going to be looking at a million per Bitcoin. 2029, we're going to be looking at 10 million per Bitcoin. 2033, we're going to be looking at a hundred million per Bitcoin. We, I, I don't think that humans can actually comprehend this yet. The exponential function like in america uh that we have a holiday called thanksgiving which happens in uh november right yeah november and uh <laughs> and but like the day it's on a thursday in in november and the day after that is called black friday because that's the day when stores historically get out of the red and into the black meaning that they they start turning a profit but it's the biggest shopping day of the year in America. And basically we'll have people like camping out. Uh, we'll have people camping out and just uh, trying to, um, to get these deals. So basically stores will have these big plasma screen TVs that normally go for $2,000 and they'll have three TVs that they're selling for a hundred dollars. And people will literally like, after they're done eating dinner on Thanksgiving, they'll go to the store, they'll sleep outside the store in zero Celsius weather so that the next morning they can be one of the first three people to get that deal. And there's been instances where they'll trample each other to, to like try and get these. And that's because of limited supply. Bitcoin's the biggest limited supply thing ever. So, I don't think we can comprehend what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, even Bitcoin has been around 10 years. It's still super early. Like we're still super early to the game. 
like Wall Street and institutions are just getting in. Like I okay, so a few back in back in September or October, uh, I it, when Bitcoin was right around ten thousand dollars, I took my IRA, my four hundred one k. And I was like, screw this S&P 500. I'm going to put it in Bitcoin because I'm pretty sure that Bitcoin is going to have an explosive year. So I had to transfer companies uh, and find one that had GBTC. And so I was like, can you put it in GBTC? First off, they had no idea what it was and they couldn't find it. But I was like, no, you guys got this. I looked it up. I know, which is the grayscale B uh, Bitcoin. And, and then afterwards, it's with Fidelity. And so for years, we've been saying Fidelity is going to have like a Bitcoin trading desk. And so when, when they finally found GBTC, they're like, oh, I think, I think we're going to, I think we have some Bitcoin solution. You should, you should use our thing. And I was like, okay, what is it? And they're like, it took a while. And then they're like, oh, you know what? That doesn't exist yet. So like Bitcoin's 10 years old, but we've totally beaten Wall Street into it. Like we're still so early in the game. And this is something that's going to do for money what the internet did for communication. Like, I don't, back, okay, so back when I was in Italy, it was, I'm going to say like 15 years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. If I want, so like right now we're talking across countries. If we wanted to do this 15 years ago, I would have had to buy, I had to buy like a little international calling card yes. and go to a pay phone and enter some numbers and then talk with you in a really terrible connection, not be able to see you. But like, look at what the internet has done for communication in 15 years. And we haven't even given Bitcoin 15 years yet. So like just thinking about the possibilities for this gives me goosebumps. And and it kind of like, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like my recommendation for beginning investors, be patient. Like if you're in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you're going to win. But if you chase the next shiny thing and lose all of your money doing that that's the only way to lose so like i think it's important that we have DeFi, and i think it's important that we have nft because this helps bring more people into the ecosystem but like the goal is just don't you know just don't lose it all like if you're in the ecosystem guys it's bitcoin has been around for 10 years the future is infinite like most of us are probably going to live to be close to 100 so that means we probably have another like 60 70 years so imagine what bitcoin could do in 60 70 years forget about what it's going to do at the end of this year think about 60 70 years this could change your whole family conclusion is uh you're in the right spot um don't be afraid of you know everybody's going to make mistakes when they get into cryptocurrencies it happens that's how we learn as human beings so if you've had trades that didn't go your way if you've lost money it happens Get back up, get on your feet. You're going to make some money this year, and then it's going to be like we got punched in the gut because you're going to lose 90% of everything. And that's like, <laughs> that's a bear market. It sucks, but you can survive through it. It lasts about three years, and then you have a wonderful year like this one. So, uh, you know, like the there's this, there's this YouTube video that I watched that was very eye opening for me because it's, it's called like Teenage Bitcoin Millionaire. And it's about it's about this kid, Eric Finman, who became a Bitcoin millionaire when he was a teenager. And everybody's like, oh, man, I want to be a teenage Bitcoin millionaire. And it's like the point that people miss is he was in Bitcoin for six years before he became a millionaire. So, like, I urge anyone who hasn't been in cryptocurrencies for six years, which would be from 2015, if you haven't been in cryptocurrency for six years, just be patient. <laughs> like <laughs> it takes time, but it's going to happen. Just be patient. Just chill. Yeah. I watch it. Thank you. Uh, thank to you. I saw <laughs> one with your video that you you were speaking about it. Uh, I watch it. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's such an important thing because we get like it's so easy and time moves so quickly in cryptocurrency. Like mm -hmm. you know, things will change in a day, and we think that the time is this but really the time is this like we have a lot of time and most people still aren't most people still own, own bitcoin or cryptocurrencies 
and most people don't understand how to do it. So if you understand how to buy and uh, and trade and do anything else with cryptocurrencies or NFTs, guess what? You are so far ahead of the curve. It's ridiculous. Like we're still in the cryptocurrency phase, which uh, right now is similar to Facebook before your parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles used Facebook. We're still in that phase right now because we still own Bitcoin most of the time before your parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles do. So like, it's still so early. Thank you, Randall, to be here. Dude, it's my pleasure. I had such a blast with you guys. And next time I'm in Italy, I'll have to come visit. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. we will go around in Naples and oh, more. Eat, <laughs> eat pizza, that'll be perfect. Pizza <laughs> for you, waiting. Awesome. <laughs> So a big like, uh, buddies, uh, and subscribe his channel and our yes, channel. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Go make check sure out, subscribe. of course, the links of uh, Crypto Love channel is in the description. Bye, see you next time. Yeah, peace. <laughs> Thanks.